Hi, I'm Luca Congedo and you're watching from GIS to Remote Sensing. This tutorial is about the land cover classification mosaic of several lens images. In particular, we are going to classify uh, the area of uh, Costa Rica, which is a country of about 51,000 square kilometers. So, let's see a summary of this tutorial. First, we are going to install the same automatic classification plugin in QJS. Then we are going to download and pre-processing lensed images. Then we are going to classify these lensed images and enhance the classification using the NDVI vegetation index. Then we are going to remove clouds and mosaic these classifications. And finally, we are going to perform the accuracy assessment and the classification report calculating the area of each land cover class. So, let's start and open QGIS. In Plugins, Manage and Install Plugins, you can search for the same automatic classification plugin, type in uh, SEMI in the search box, Then we can click Install Plugin and after a few seconds the plugin will be installed successfully. Then we can close this window and as you can see the plugin loads uh, the interface with the main toolbar and the classification and the recreation docs. First it is useful to set some of the options of the plugin in the settings window, so in the same automatic classification plugin menu, go to settings and processing. The new window of the main interface will open, and we are interested in the available RAM option. It is important to set uh, half of the available RAM uh, in the system. So, for instance, if the system has uh, 2 GB of RAM, we set 1024 MB here. So, the first step of this tutorial is the download of Lancet images. The Semi-Automatic Classification plugin is a specific tool and for downloading Lancet images. So, in this window of the main interface, the first step is to, uh, to set a directory where the lens database is downloaded. So, click uh, Select Database Directory and create a new folder. For instance, a new folder named uh, LensedDB. Here, the Lancet database will be downloaded, which is mainly a list of the available Lancet images in the USGS archive. So now we can click Update Database and click Yes at this question, and the database download will start, and after a few minutes will be completed. So I recommend installing, if you haven't yet, the Open Layers plugin, which allows for uh, showing some maps like uh, OpenStreetMap in QGIS. So we can load the OpenStreetMap. So we can zoom to the area of Costa Rica. And now in the main interface, we can select the upper left coordinates and the lower right coordinates where we are going to search for lensed images. So clicking the map we can see the coordinates here of the upper left corner. Then we click in the map uh, setting the lower right corner. We can set uh, several options for searching uh, images, like uh, the satellite, the acquisition date, start and two.
Also we can set the maximum cloud cover allowed in the image. And we can also uh, find images by using the image ID, of the lens at the image ID, which is contained in the metadata file. So uh, for this tutorial I have already selected these three images with this uh, image ID, so we can copy and paste the, the image ID here and click find images. So the searching uh, will start. So after the search is completed, we'll have these three lensed images listed here in the image list. We can highlight these three images and click uh, display image preview. And after a few seconds, we'll have a preview in QJS loaded. We can see here the Landsat 7, a Landsat 7 image and the Landsat 8 covering this central area of Costa Rica and another Landsat 8 image here. We can also see that there is a cloud cover all over the images that we are going to remove and before downloading the images, we should go to the preprocessing Landsat tab and set some of the options of the preprocessing, automatic preprocessing, like brightness, temperatures in Celsius and apply this one atmospheric correction. These are options used for the conversion of Landsat bands from digital number to reflectance. The plugin allows also for the pan sharpening of Landsat bands, Landsat 7 and Landsat 8, but we are not going to use this option in this tutorial. So we uncheck the create band set uh, option here. Then we can come back to the download Landsat tab. And we uncheck uh, these options, leaving checked these preprocessed images and check also this and now we can start the loading the images so click uh, download the image from this we can select uh, a directory where lens of the images are downloaded for instance uh, lens of the image and click OK So the download process will start and of course uh, images are uh, quite big so it will take some time to download uh, all the images. And after the download is completed we'll have uh, these directories created in the Lancet images. We can see that each directory contains the lens band and the metadata file and the directories ending with converted contains the bands automatically converted to reflectance. So now we can remove these previews from QJS. And we can start the classification of the first lens date image. So we load the bands from 2 to 7 in QJS. This first image is a Landsat 8 image acquired in 2014. So we can hide all the layers because we are now going to create a band set in the plugin. Benset is the input, the classification input of the plugin, which will be based on the Lancet bands. So in the Benset tab, we can click Select All, so we can select all the Lancet bands loaded in QJS, then click Add Raster to Set. We can see that the bands are loaded in the Benset definition. Then we click sort by name, so the bands are ordered automatically 
by band number. Then we select Landsat 8 in the Quick Lens settings. And now we are ready to create a, a RGB composite, a face color composite. So uh, for instance we can select 432 and automatically a virtual raster is created and loaded in QGIS and we can see here a color composite where vegetation is highlighted in red because a near infrared band. So in order to enhance the display of the image we can click one of these two buttons for stretching the display, the bands, so we can see better the features in the image. And now we can create uh, the input files for the classification, so the training shape file here, clicking the button new shape. We can create uh, a new shape file containing the required fields here, for instance uh, Roy, and click save. Then we uh, need to create uh, a signature list file in the classification log. So click save and create a new file for instance six and click save. So we are going to create a classification uh, identifying these land cover classes the tap, vegetation, soil and water with a macro class from one to four. So let's see an example of macro class. Uh, a macro class like uh, vegetation is a, a set of classes like uh, class uh, grass or class trees which is used in the plugin for uh, automatically uh, classifying the features uh, that are the pixel in the image using the macro class code. This is convenient for uh, classifying uh, different features which belong to uh, a macro class. So now we need to create a region of interest, uh, Roy. We can draw uh, Roy in the image, which is a polygon, with a left click for defining the vertices and right click to close the polygon. So now, for instance, we have created a, a Roy of the built up. So we need to define the macro class information and the class information here. Then we can click save Roy. So the temporary Roy that we have created is saved in the training shape file and the signature list is calculated in the signature list. We can see that the number uh, over the cursor in the image, which uh, shows the NDVI. NDVI is the ratio between the near infrared minus the red band and the near infrared plus the red band. So we can uh, see that uh, vegetation has a uh, very high uh, values in the near infrared band, so this value can be useful for identifying vegetation in the image. So for instance we can create a ROI over this area of trees here. And then we need to uh, change the macro class ID to for vegetation. The class ID which uh, must be uh, unique for each uh, ROI. Then we can click save ROI. And now we should change the colors of the spectral signatures in the signature list, for instance red for the build up, and green for the vegetation. So let's have a look at the spectral signatures here. We can highlight the signatures in the signature list, then click the button here for showing the spectral signature plot, we can see the vegetation which has a very high value in the band, the near infrared band, 
we can see the signature details with the actual values of the spectral signature. We can also uh, see the spectral distances between these two spectral signatures. For instance, the jeffries matusita distance is very useful for the maximum likelihood algorithm. Because it shows if two rows are similar. So if the jeffrey matusita is near 2, then the rows are good because they are different. So now we are going to create other regions of interest for the other classes. For instance, we can create one region for the soil class. You can see here the NDVI values are quite low. I recommend changing frequently the RGB color composite and stretching the image. Because we can identify the objects in the image more clearly. So here, in this part of the image where the NDVI value is very low, we can create a new polygon for the soil class. So we can change the macro class ID tree, the macro class information soil, the class ID, and the class information. So we could uh, click Save Roy, but now I'm going to uh, disable the Add Signature List option and click Save Roy. So as you can see, the ROI is the ROI is saved in the ROI list, but it is not calculated in the signature list. So now we can highlight this ROI in the ROI list and click Add to Signature. So now the signature is calculated and added to the signature list, and we can change the color. So it can be useful if you have ROIs that are not uh, saved. So have a look also at this uh, signature. You can see the distances between the spectral signatures and the plot. You can see the differences in the plot. And now we are going to create another ROI for the class uh, water. So we are moving the image over an area where there, are, there is, uh, for instance, a river. So here we have a, a river. If we change the color composite, we can see it more clearly. And now we are going to create a region of interest using the automatic region growing tool. So click the button here. We can see the very low NDVI values. And clicking the image, our ROI polygons is created according to the values of the range radius that we can increase. So for instance, clicking again, we can see a larger polygon. We can click the Redo button, and then when we are satisfied, we can set the macroclass ID 4 and the macroclass information water. The same for the class ID and the class information. And we can click Save Roy after enabling a signature list. So the spectral signature of the water is uh, calculated. We can see it in the spectral signature plot. We can see that water has a very low spectral signature. We can also navigate in the plot here and zoom. 
You can also see the standard deviation of the spectral signatures. So now going back to the spectral distances, we can see we can, for instance, compare the built-up to vegetation. We can see that there are very wide spectral distances. But if we compare the built-up with the soil, we can see that these two spectral signatures are more similar. So now we are ready and we can create a preview of the classification. We are going to use a maximum, the maximum likelihood algorithm. We can uncheck the use macro plus ID here. And we set a preview size of 500 pixels. Then we click the button, the pointer here, and click the map. There are a few seconds, the preview of the classification is loaded in QGIS, we can zoom to the preview. We can also see the, the preview in transparency over the image with this tool. So we can see that there are several errors uh, of, of classification. If we click the pointer, the preview pointer, and uh, right click instead of the left click, with the right click in the image, we get the algorithm raster, which is a raster representing the distance of each pixel to spectral signatures. So wide areas represent pixels that are close to spectral signatures, while dark areas represent pixels that are distant from spectral signatures, so probably these are errors. So in this dark area we are going to create a new ROI. Here we have a forest, so we are going to create a new region of interest here, where the DVI value is very high. We can increase the range radius, so we can create a larger ROI again so here we can see that the ROI polygon covers the dark area so we can set the macro class ID and the class ID of vegetation Here, vegetation. And we can click Save Roy. Now we set the color of this spectral signature green. And we can perform a preview again. We can see that the algorithm raster here is uh, white. You can see that these previews are in the layers of QJS, our raster files. So now we can create a new preview and we should notice that the results are better than before because we have created because we have created a new spectral signature. We can compare the two vegetation spectral signatures. We can see that the Jeffries Matusita distance is good, while the spectral angle is very low, so if we use the spectral angle mapping algorithm, we could have errors, as we can see in the plot. But we are going to use the maximum likelihood algorithm. So we check use microclass ID and we click redo.
Again, we can see that vegetation here is classified correctly. We show in transparency over the image. Now we are going to create a region of interest over clouds. We can see that if we create a preview over clouds, these are classified as built up, which is of course is an error. So we are going to create a simple uh, mask. Now click the recreation button and uh, right click over a cloud pixel. Automatically uh, the spectral signature of the pixel is uh, displayed in the plot. And we can compare the, this pixel with the built-up spectral signature. So we can see these are different. So we are going to create a region of interest uh, over clouds. In particular, we are going to create a mask for clouds. So uh, using the polygon tool, we are going to create a new polygon here and right click to close then we set a macro class ID value of 0 which is used for, by the plugin for unclassified pixels so uh, setting the macro class ID 0 uh, and we set a new class ID clouds and we click save Roy. Now we change the color of the spectral signature and we can perform a preview again. As we can see this black area is unclassified. It means that clouds are masked from the classification. Of course there are several areas that are uh, still classified as built up over clouds, but we are going to use a more efficient tool for masking clouds later. So after the creation of several ROIs, uh, the more is the better, we can perform a, a preview again. So when the results are good, we can uh, save the signature list file and we can use all these spectral signatures for creating the classification of the whole uh, lensed image. So click uh, the button Perform Classification, select, uh, select a name for the new classification file, TIFF file, After a few minutes of processing, you can see the result is a land cover classification of the whole image. Of course, we can see that the clouds are still classified as built up here, and we have the border the black border of the image classified as built up and we are going to mask these errors uh, later and so we can close this QJS project and now we can start the classification of the second Landsat 8 image so again load the bands converted to reflectance in QJS again hide whole layers so we can create a band set of the select all the bands and add the rasters to set then click sort by name and select Landsat 8. 
So again we can create a color composite here. Here we have uh, uh, this other Lancedate image acquired, acquired in 2014. Again we need to create uh, a new training shape file and a new signature list file. And after the collection of several ROIs, we can perform the classification of this second Lancetate image. So again select the output and click save. At the end we have uh, the classification of this Lancetate image. And of course we have the problem of clouds and also the black border which is classified as soil in this case. We are going of course to mask this uh, later. So we can close the QJS project and start a new one for the classification of the third image, this is the Landsat 7 image. So we can load the bands from 1 to 5 and band 7 in QJS. Again, we can hide the layers and create the new band set. Again, select all, add the raster to set and sort by name. And now we choose uh, Landsat 7. And now we can create a new uh, color composite here. We can see that this image covers the same area of the first Lancet 8 image. And unfortunately, Lancet 7 images are affected by these uh, black stripes of uh, no data. However, we are going to mask this uh, later. As usual, create uh, the training shape file and the signature list file and collect several regions of interest and perform the classification. So we have classified this Lancet 7 image. We can see that the black stripes are classified as built up. So now in a new QJS project, load the bands and the classification of the first Lancet 8 image. We are going to enhance the classification using the NDVI. So open the tool BandCalc of the plugin, click the button Refresh List, so we have the list of all the rasters loaded in QJS. Now we are going to write the expression for the calculation of the NDVI. So band 5 minus band 4 divided band 5 plus band 4 and close so this is the uh, expression for the calculation of the NDVI click calculate select uh, the output uh, the output name of the NDVI raster and click save after a few minutes, the calculation will be completed. So, have a look at the NDVI raster. You can set a proper symbology here. And we can see that, uh, of course, vegetation has uh, higher values, while uh, soil and urban areas have uh, lower values here. We are going to use this NDVI raster uh, in order to enhance the classification of vegetation. In the BandCalc tool, uh, clear the expression and click uh, Refresh List. Now we have the NDVI raster 
we are going to create a conditional expression with the np where so np where uh, ndvi is greater than 0 0.6 comma 2 comma classification 1 and of course close this means that the, where the NDVI uh, values are greater than 0 0.6 we are going to set a value of 2 which is the macro class uh, vegetation otherwise we are going to leave the values of classification 1 so click calculate and select the output of this new classification, for instance, classification 1 and DVI. After the calculation, the, the new classification is loaded in QGIS. We can copy the style from the old classification to the new one. Style, paste style. So we have the same colors. We can compare the two classifications we can see that the vegetation has increased, uh, particularly over the soil areas. So we have increased the area classified as vegetation. We can do the same also for the other two classifications using uh, the NDVI and we can see that there are still uh, um, clouds classified as built up or soil that we need to mask so now we are going to use uh, uh, the quality assessment band of the Landsat 8 in order to mask uh, cloud cover each value of this particular raster uh, represents a condition of the surface uh, or the atmosphere and in particular certain values uh, allow for the identification of clouds. So if we use the tool uh, identify we can see the values that represent clouds like, uh, for instance, uh, this one. So we can use these values for the masking of clouds in the classification. We're going to use the band calc tool and the conditional statement uh, np where. So uh, copy and paste this expression. That I'm going to explain. So the first part of this expression uh, represents uh, the values of, in the quality assessment band that identify clouds. So uh, with the first part of this expression we are selecting the, all the cloud pixels and we are uh, setting a value of zero uh, that, that is uh, classified in the classification and the last part of the expression, uh, classification 1 and DVI, uh, represent uh, all the other pixels. So uh, the pixels that are not cloud covered in the quality assessment band are uh, classified as the original value of the classification 1. So we click on calculate and we select the classification output uh, for instance, classification 1 cloud, and click save. After the calculation, we get the new classification, so we copy and paste the style. And we can see that most part of clouds is masked. However, we can see that there are still pixels classified as built up, especially in the border of clouds, and we are going to use another method for masking also these pixels. So, in the case of the Lensa 7 classification, 
uh, that uh, doesn't have a correct assessment band, uh, we are going to use uh, uh, the properties of cows, which are cold and uh, white. So we are using the thermal infrared band uh, and the blue band for creating the mask. So uh, load all the bands, the Landsat 7 bands in QGIS. So we can hide all the layers and show just the blue and the thermal infrared band. We can see that this band converted to temperature, particularly cold for clouds. As we can see uh, with the tool identify that cloud pixels have a very low temperature and a high value in the blue band, which is band 1. Here also for these other pixels, you can see the same. So what we are going to do is to create an expression in the Bental tool which uh, allows for the selection of pixels that have a low temperature and high reflectance value uh, in the blue band. So copy and paste this expression that I'm going to explain. So, uh, the first part of the expression represents the selection of the temperature lower than 23 degrees Celsius. The second part represents the selection of pixels with uh, values, with reflectance values greater than 0 0.1 uh, in the blue band. And the other part of the expression uh, represents the selection of pixels, uh, of no data pixels that are present. Uh, in the Landsat 7 bands with the scanline corrector failure. So all of these pixels, uh, cloud pixel and no data pixel are, are set to uh, zero, the value of zero and classified, and all the other pixels are set uh, as the original values classification 3. So uncheck uh, intersection and click calculate and set the output name, for instance, classification three clouds. So at the end of the process, so we get the new classification with the cloud mask. And copy and paste, uh, as usual, the style from the original classification to the new one. we can see that the clouds are completely masked. Here we can see the difference with the previous classification. We've also masked the border. Of course, the threshold that we have used for the temperature and the blue band uh, have to be uh, assigned based on the image, so different images should have different thresholds. And here we can see the results of the three classification with the cloud mask using this uh, method based uh, on temperature and the blue band. And we can see that uh, all the clouds are completely masked. Now we are going to uh, create a mosaic of these uh, classifications. We are going to create a conditional statement with the empty where. We select classification 1 clouds uh, equals to 0. Here we are going to put uh, another conditional statement with the classification 3 equals 0. And then we put uh, classification 2. Basically this means that if classification 3 equals 0 then we get the classification 2 uh, values. Otherwise, we get the classification 3. 
Then we close and put classification 1 clause. This means that uh, when classification 1 is not equal to 0, we get the classification 1 values. So now that we have completed the expression, we uncheck intersection and click calculate. So we select the output name, for instance classification mosaic. And we click save. After a few minutes the classification mosaic will be completed. As usual, we copy and paste the style of the classification. And we can see the result. Here we can see that we have filled uh, several uh, no data values. So now we can assess the accuracy of the classification. One uh, simple but not very rigorous method is to compare the classification to the training ship file. So load the training ship file uh, in QGIS and open the post processing tools in the accuracy tab. Select the classification mosaic and the training ship file as input. In particular, select the macro class ID as shape file field and click Calculate Error Matrix. We select the output file name. This tool will create a raster of the accuracy where the pixels of the classification are compared to the training ship file and each value represents a code of comparison between the training ship file, the reference and the classification. Here we can see the summary and the error matrix. And it also calculates uh, several statistics like the overall accuracy, the producer and user accuracies and the kappa hat. And of course I recommend reading the user manual uh, for more information about the accuracy. Ok, so now we can clip uh, the classification to the study area, uh, which is Costa Rica. Uh, we can go to this uh, website of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, which uh, uh, allows for the download of the shapefile of Costa Rica. So click download and Again, download here. Download the zip file, which is which contains the shape file. We are going to extract this archive here and load the shape file in QJS. Now we can see that it is missing the uh, coordinate system, so uh, select the WGS84. And now we are going also to define the projection of this shape file before clipping. So in Vector, Data Management Tools, uh, define current projection, select the shape file of Costa Rica and choose uh, WGS84. Here and click OK. And again OK. And yes. OK, now that we have defined the projection, we can clip the classification with this shape file. So, raster extraction clipper. Select the classification mosaic as input raster. We define the output, for instance classification clip and click save then we are going to select the mask layer which is uh, the Costa Rica shape file here 
we set the no data value equals zero and click OK. After a few minutes the process will be completed and we'll have the classification clip to the study area. Now we copy and paste the style of the classification and we can see the result. Here is the classification of Costa Rica. Of course there are uh, no data values uh, due to the clouds. We would need uh, several lensed images, uh, more lensed images for uh, filling these gaps. Ok, now in the plugin menu uh, go to the post-processing tool classification report and we are going to calculate uh, the statistics of the classification so select the classification clip as input and check use no data value equals zero and then click calculate classification record at the end of the calculation we'll get the statistics for each land cover class like the pixel sum the percentage and the area well, that's all for this edition. If you have any comment or question, please join the Facebook group or the Google Plus community. Thank you for watching.